We are here for part two of the ultimate gamer's bag or wallet, whatever you want to call it. So we have our panel that we completed on our first step, our first taping. I got this, this is still taped down. We've removed the extra stabilizer and here's our pocket all ready to go. And then here's our flap. I went ahead and top stitched it since I did a turn flap. Not the best top stitching, I was using my featherweight. And I went ahead and put my snaps. I'm using magnetic snaps. I put the male version on already, so they're already ready to go. Um, and then this is ready to apply. So let's set this aside for now. And we won't need this right away. And we won't need our gusset pocket for a little bit. So one note about the gusset pocket, this is confusing people. The instructions will tell you that you need whatever the width, 17 or 16 inches, by 11 inches. It's because you're gonna fold it in half. And then this fold is gonna go at the top. Now, I'm using this custom um, cotton lycra. So I put some um, woven fuse on the back of it to stabilize it because it's very stretchy. But I didn't wanna use all this on the inside of the pocket because it's expensive. So what I do is I take and I divide the height by two and add a half an inch to each of it. So this came out to be, I think, um, 16 by five or 16 by six. And then I made two pieces, six inches each. Usually I actually kind of make this piece a quarter much more. So this would be like six and this would be five and three quarters. Um, that way, most of the time, this will wrap over to the back side a little bit more than I did on this one. So I sew them together and then I top stitch it. Now, because this didn't have a lot of body to it, I also went in and just put a short strip of Decoville light on the back, one inch right where the snaps were, I guesstimated, because I didn't want it in the seams. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a gusset a pocket. So this is gonna get stitched down, and then we're gonna go ahead and fold this over like this into our bag. So I kind of put the Decoville where it would be, where the snaps are, but not in the seams. So just don't leave it a half an inch or an inch on either side. Okay, so that's how that works. And we'll review that again when we get to it. So I have my lining panels, which I'm now realizing are not long enough. Uh, Grayson, <laughs> I cut these wrong. <laughs> um, so you need your lining that's cut correctly. I um, think we can be, get started without it though. I'll have to get another piece of it. And then we have this piece, which is seven and a half by 11 or 12. This is gonna form our um, card slots for our, our games, our game cards. And then we have two pieces that is the bottom of the bag. And then there's a tiny little piece in between. Um, I need to get some more lining. Hey, Grayson, I cut my lining pieces the wrong size. Ooh. Could you give me this fabric, please? Oh, where is it? On the table. I don't know if I, I don't know how I managed to do that. The whole thing? Yeah, both of these are on. Yeah. So I'm going to have to rough cut this real quick. About inside. an inch off. For like five minutes. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know how I did that. I, You know what? I looked at it and I thought... It said the same cutting directions as the um, the other one, the first hooping, and I was like, that's weird, that can't be right. But nobody told me it's wrong on the PDF, so maybe I modified it after they were testing. So I think, is the width enough? Let me make sure the width is right too, since I messed up. Yeah, the width is enough, it's just the height is off. So let me cut a couple more pieces right quick. So, sorry about this, guys. You know, it's not like one of Kimberly's videos if there's not something wrong. One of these days, I'll be all organized. I don't know if you guys do a lot of sewing, but if you do like to sew for relaxing, Jess, Okla Roots, she, oh my gosh, she's so awesome. I love her. She does such a good job with her videos. She has everything prepared and um tells you everything before she starts sewing so do not if you are like want to learn how to sew sew a bag 
check her channel out because she just does a fabulous job. Okay, that's out of the way. So, we got all of our pieces and then we have our zipper. So, um, on the back, I used a number three zipper. You can use a number five, but it's the back. So I wanted to show you, if you haven't watched the first video, this is the difference in the width of them. Not all bags, you cannot use number five in all in the hoop bags because see how much wider the teeth is, the teeth are? So your spade, you need to have enough room here that you don't hit this. But all of my bags from 2020 on, and I put 2020 in the um, low or on the picture, all of my bags from 2020 on will work with either um, a three inch or a five inch. And with the three inch, this is what your zipper will look like. Um, unless you do the trick I showed another video where you kind of fold this down to meet the, um, seat, the zipper teeth. You can make that more encased. So this is the five inch. So since this is only one inches wide because it's set up for a number three zipper, how do we center this on here? Well, it's because I always include the center line. So if you just take the middle of your zipper teeth back here and line that up with that center placement line, you're gonna be right every time. So I get my tape ready and do make sure you <laughs> leave a little bit hangover at the end. I didn't on the last one. I'm hoping my zipper will be okay because I wasn't paying attention, but generally you wanna leave like a uh, inch overlap so what I do is I kind of, I can't see right here, so I have to pull it up over here, sign it up, and then I'm gonna tape this piece down. And then what I do, and I'm using this big chunky chevron pole because I didn't realize how ginormous these were when I ordered them, so I gotta use them up. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and small pieces of tape, and I'm gonna roll the zipper down the placement lines as I tape it in place. This is what I do that I have found works the best. So again, so I'm lining up this with the center placement line. And as I go along, I hold it in place. I put the tape on the bottom part of the zipper tape first, all the way down. And then I come back and I put tape on the top. I don't go back and forth. I go one side and then over. and just check that line up and try and get as even as you can. Oh, this bag is gonna be gorgeous. Oh my, oh my goodness, it's gonna be gorgeous. It is gonna be gorgeous. I'm almost tempted not to use it for the camera bag and change it to the wallet. So there we go. So now it's nice and straight and there's no ridges and hopefully it's even, it's a little bit off, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, this is actually modified based on the dolly clutch that will be coming soon, which is modified and based on the dolly um, mini rucksack. So when I was doing the final stages of the mini rucksack, I quickly realized, oh, this is gonna have to be a clutch. People are gonna ask for a clutch. Okay, so, whoops, I didn't press, lift that up. Okay, so now you can see how it's all nice and centered and taped down. And I'm gonna put a big piece of tape on this big old chunky pole because you don't want that rolling around and your presser foot might potentially hit it. And that would be very, very bad. I am recording, aren't I? Yes, I am. Sorry about that whiplash there, guys. Okay. So I'm gonna tape this down because it wants to move and I don't want it to move. And I'm gonna tape the pole down. There's a lot of steps to this um, Hooping 33, don't let that intimidate you. It's because of the pleating for the card slots. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and tack down our zipper. And I was using the same color thread as on the back but it started shredding on me. Um, I have that issue with the Floriani or Fuji threads. When I get, even on my six needle, I have the same issue. When I get close to the end of the spools, they just start shredding. I don't know why. Okay, so there we go. 
all tacked down. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the extra tape everywhere. Do it now because you will forget to do it and then it'll be stuck in your seams and you will be, if you swear, you'll be saying some choice swear words. If you don't swear, I don't know. How do you not swear? Um, you'll just be frustrated. Yeah, that's it, you'll be frustrated. While you're waiting for me to mindlessly pull away this tape and put it all over my machine and get gobbly goops all over, why don't you go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already and like the video if you like it. I'm not gonna force you to, but um, if you hit that little bell to get the notifications, you will get sneak peeks to the videos because I usually get the video uploaded before I list the pattern. All right, so now what we wanna do is kind of turn this hoop over. Now, this is the tricky part when you're using a number five zipper. I have this digitized based on um, the one inch line. So when we do our placements, you wanna use the line, your um, placement line and not the zipper tape. But to be honest, I try to cut my materials generous anyway, so you line it up with the zipper tape. It's fine if you cut it a little generous. But I do measure based on that line. Is this my new piece that I just cut? Yes, it is. Okay, so we want to put our right side facing down. Center this over the zipper. So your long edge is lined up with the bottom of your zipper. Now, generally when I'm talking about my bags, um, left, right, top, bottom. I'm not talking about as it's oriented in the hoop. I am talking about as it's oriented in the bag. The reason for that is I don't know how you're gonna rotate the bag in your hoop. I don't know all machines. So when I say at the top, I mean the bag, the zippers at the top of the bag, the bottom. Okay, now we need that skinny little panel. Now this guy, I put some Decoville on it. You'll see this is really loosey-goosey here, but down here, I try to make it about a quarter inch. So this is the piece I want to go next to the zipper. So we're gonna line this up, right side facing down, and we're gonna line that up again with the bottom of our zipper. And I try to keep the Decoville out of the final seam. And if you line this up, if you're using Decoville light and you measure a quarter of an inch, then when you have to fold this panel down, it'll fold down almost perfect. Um, and you don't have to like finger crease it a lot or anything, it'll just flip right down. So since this is a long panel, I'm gonna tape it in the center. So again, we're on step three now. This is the tack down and we're on our short little panel here at the top. This is just gonna be a panel in between the zipper and the flap. Now, if uh, see, it's getting a little bit off kilter because I didn't tape it down good enough here. It's gonna be fine, but make sure you tape it down. Actually, I don't know if it's gonna be fine. <laughs> Let me check this real quick. I should have taped it better. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that seam out and redo this, tape this better because um, I don't want the deco bell stuck in the seam. So here's my handy dandy little seam ripper tool. This is from Kai. Oh, I had a giveaway in the group. If you're not in my group, Starfish and Design Embroidery Group. And it was for one of these, right? So I ordered it from Amazon and mailed it to the lady. And it took like a couple weeks for her to get it. And I emailed her and said, oh, you know, I got a message that's still delayed and blah, blah, blah. So she finally gets in the mail this week. And she's like, uh, Kimberly, did you know there were six of them? I'm like, what? No, I thought it was just one. And sure enough, I go back and I look and nowhere in the description did it say there were six of them. Um, but at the very top in the title, it had a comma six after the name of it. And I was like, oh my goodness. So sure enough, she got six of them. And um, I paid for one what, when I bought my original one, it was the same, around the same price. It was a couple dollars less. So she's like, well, maybe I could send them on. I'm like, well, it'll cost more in shipping to do that. So I think she's gonna find some happy owners in her community. 
to pay it forward to. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on this side as well so that doesn't happen again because I don't want it to get off kilter. And it's because this vinyl-like material is um, silky. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up here as well. Normally you don't have to do that because normally the weight of the vinyl, kind of the gravity holds it in place. All right, so I'm gonna back up and start this stitch again. But you saw how quick that seam ripper works. It's like a tiny little razor blade. Yeah, so join the group because I do giveaways, just randomly do a giveaway here and there. I sent somebody a pair of the beautiful pie, the 7205 scissors, these are amazing. They cut through layers like butter. I'm still a little bit off, but I'm okay with that. Oh, you know why? Why do you think I'm off, guys? What did I just, I didn't follow my own words. Remember I told you? You're supposed to line it up with the placement line and not the end of the zipper. This zipper is, um, I think it's a quarter inch wider than the normal zippers. So that was my seam allowance for the Decoville. That's why I cut over on there. Now I understand why. So I should have lined this up with the placement line and not the zipper. But that's okay. I'm just like, Trying to figure this out. And I'm finding that this material, there's like this flannel on it. It's not letting me reuse the tape very much. So now we're gonna go ahead and fold both pieces down. So let's flip over to the back and fold this down carefully because we, whenever we're working on the back of the hoop, we wanna be very gingerly about our movements. So I use my finger and just kind of crease it along here and just pull it tautly and tape down the corners. And you can tape down the center too. Um, sometimes the center will come up on you. Like see right here, it's pushing up. So I'm gonna put a little piece of tape right there because sometimes those will, when it's not folded well. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and fold this down and it's gonna work a little bit harder against us because I got the Decoville in the seam allowance since I laid it down wrong. So I'm just gonna get a couple pieces of tape ready. So then, so what we're gonna do, while this is working, we're on step four. After this, we're gonna fold the lining up. So we wanna top stitch the lining that helps keep the lining down on the back, but then we don't want the lining positioned when we start to work on our pocket on the front. So we're gonna turn this over and fold the lining up out of the way on the back after we do this top stitch. And Grayson, my son, picked out this material um, from whatever that site is, I said Hungry Hippie, I think it is. It's gorgeous. Oh, this is gonna be gorgeous bags. Just gorgeous. Wow. Look at that, Grayson. Okay. Uh-oh. That didn't sound good. Oh, I hope we have enough of this thread to last. All right, so there we go. That's nice and done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and fold it out of the way. And tape it. So we can go ahead and leave this tape down here for right now. Now, what you can also do is, this is gonna stay out of the way for a little while. So if you don't wanna worry and risk about it falling down, why do I not have any of those pins when I need them? You can take a little pin, I'm just gonna use this little clip right here. And um, these are the magnetic clips that go to this hoop. And you can just go ahead and 
do that so you, it stays out of the way. I don't know where the rest of them are, else I'd use those too. So we're gonna go ahead and run the placement stitch now for our um, flap. Hey Grayson, can I have your phone? I think this is where I needed to do a better picture. Okay, so we have a little tick mark right here and then the flap is gonna sit within these lines and then lined up with that tick mark right there. So get our flap. Okay, so and our flap is gonna be just like this and then it'll fold down. So we're gonna line up the little tick mark here. So you kinda gotta do this little upside down thing. And then we're just gonna lay right against this placement line. And this is way too long. I don't know what happened here. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> just line it up with that placement. This, this line the stitching goes on this line and lined up with this. And I don't know how this line got so long. So let me show you from over here this direction. Okay. So we're gonna flip this over and line this line up with that line and this line is stitching on this line and it should fit between these tick marks once I fix this because I don't know what I did I these are too long so you gotta fix that it'll be fixed when you get it so just line up the tick mark is all you need to do in the stitches and then we're gonna tape it down really well because we don't want it to come loose all right I'm gonna show you that one more time so this is gonna be this way up, wrong side up. Your tick line match right there. And then this stitch line, this basting line is gonna match on that line. And then tape it down really well. Go ahead and tack this down. All right. And it's really thick, so you might need to make sure you go up another size needle if you have to. And you can kind of guide it over here. So all this tape did you find it no use the iPad and call it or get my work phone my son lost his phone he may have already put it over here somewhere for me to use and I have misplaced it oops all right, let's get all this tape off here. And then we can take the tape off down here as well. And I'm gonna trim that little my jump line. Number? I actually don't know. Oh, my heart, yeah. Here, go in the bedroom. And Tell Siri to call it or find your find iPhone. Okay, sorry guys. All right, so we have that all ready to go. Now we're gonna get our other panel. Now this one I only have Decoville 
on the back of it. I'm sorry, not deco wool. I have woven fuse too on it. Um, but I want to line it up and make sure <laughs> I want to make sure it matches. Okay, so we're going to line this up with the bottom of the flap. Center it over there and tape it down. Up. My video? I, it tried calling you instead. Oh, sorry guys, hold on. No, it's still good. Sorry guys. Just edit that part out. <laughs> He's like, just edit that part out. It's not that easy. Okay. <clears throat> ah, sorry. All right, so now we're going to, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, we're going to tack this down. Make sure your lining is still out of the way back there. So again, we line that up with the bottom of our um, flap. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape and fold that down and we're gonna top stitch it. So this, all does a good job of securing the flap in place because that flap is going to take a lot of weight. Now fold this down and then finger crease it and then tape it down here at the bottom really well so it doesn't come loose. Is it in your sleeve? Yes. Phone has been found, guys. Okay, so we're taping this down really well. And now we're gonna do our top stitch. Now, I'm hoping it's gonna get through here. Um, thank you, Grayson, because it was pretty thick. Oh, barely. So I might have turned to a 100 needle there because that seam made it much thicker. Yes, but I need it in two seconds. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We're gonna start our pocket for our, our thing. So you can see now here, the flap is gonna come down here like this. We're not top stitching over this. It's gonna stay there but we need to do our card slots. So we're gonna start with um, a placement stitch. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and place our fabric wrong side down against that placement line, centered on that placement line. All right, so I'm gonna take some more pictures because this proved to be the confusing part in the PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some extra pictures. Oops, right, let's see, do the right angle. So we're gonna place it against the line. So there's like seven, eight steps. Okay, then tape that down. Then we're gonna run um, the step to just basically tack this down and hold it in place. 
So we're just putting a little bit of body to the back of our um, card slots here. Did I get this centered over here well? Don't worry about the raw edges on the ends because that's gonna get taken off later. But we don't want our card slots to be too thick because those little cards are really tiny. So now we're gonna tack this down. And now we're gonna start the next steps of, um, I'm sorry, I actually tack it down in two places. Um, the next step of folding, tacking, folding, tacking, folding. So it's gonna be repeatedly we're gonna do this. Okay, so now it's coming down here to get in position for the next one. So see where we have the line there, oops. Okay, so this is step one. So we're gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two. Step one is we'll fold from the top down. This is the top of our pocket. And finger crease that, tape it down. As you go along, you wanna make sure that you try to keep your edges even, okay? So this is step one. So we just fold it against that line. And now we have the right side up. Now we're gonna run step two, and that's gonna go ahead and fold, give us the fold line for the bottom of the pocket. All right, now we're gonna take the tape off. And I don't usually even need to keep using the tape, but it's up to you and I'm using the wrong color. This is gonna make it hard to see in the video, so in the PDF. Okay, so you're gonna just go ahead and fold up against that line, like that. Finger crease it, make sure it's on a firm surface. Keep the sides nice and even, and then tape down the sides just to hold them in place. And now we're gonna create the tack marks for the top fold. So now we're going back to step one, top fold. in position for the bottom fold again. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape off. And now we're gonna fold down. Fold down. And don't pull too hard. See what I just did? If you do that, you're gonna mess up your pocket in the middle. So keep this against a firm surface, gently finger crease, and if you crease both sides, the middle is gonna crease along with you. Tape it down. If you've done my um, credit card slots, this is exactly the same process. All right. This back in position. Now we're gonna stitch the bottom again. So this is step two. So we have a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Did my thread just come undone? Oh, it did. You used stinker, bud. Oh. Nope, it doesn't want to work tonight. I do notice that sometimes uh, um, the needle threader won't work when your needle starts to get dull. I just replaced this before the last bag, so it should still be okay. So we're gonna try and make it through, but at the end of the day, needles are like, you know, 50 cents or whatever, so if it causes us too much angst, we'll just go ahead and put a new needle in, especially since we just went through that thick layer for the flap. Alright, let me put 
pull off this extra thread here. All right, so sorry for interrupting me with videos, but I wanna make sure that people understand what this is doing. So then we're gonna do the same thing, pull the tape off. And then we're gonna pull this up. And then now you have the wrong side up. Finger crease this. Tape. Tape. And now we're gonna run the top, number one, again. So one, two, one, two, one, two. And it comes out to that little tick because that just gives us a tiny little bit um, to bend against, to fold against. When it's just a straight line, my first few um, stitch and flips, I just used a straight line, and I found it was um, a little bit harder to fold down against it. So I thought, oh, what if I just put a little tack out? That way it'll be a little bit easier. So again, picture. So now we're gonna go ahead and fold it down. So the right side is up again. And then finger crease it. So now we've made one, two, so we have one more slot to go. So again, I'm just gonna lightly finger crease this while it's against the firm surface. Now I'm using this kind of vinyl underneath here, so I don't wanna get the arm anywhere near that. But if you're using all cotton materials and a pressing cloth, and you have one of those um, little travel irons, you could easily take it and go ahead and press this in between. It'll give you a cleaner finish. But I don't have that right now. Okay, so this definitely was the most confusing step for the testers. And always make sure that this does not come loose. Okay, so now this is gonna be our last bottom. We're gonna fold up against this and make our top pleat. This will be our last top pleat. Okay, so again, we have the placement line there, and then we're gonna fold up against that line. And then tape it down. Don't worry about the frayed edges, that's gonna get cut off. going to need a piece of scrap tearaway to cover this pocket up. Okay, so this is our last one. So pleat there. Remove the tape. and then again fold down and now you see we have one two three so now we don't want our card slot to be that wide because the keen cards are only one inch wide so we're going to divide this pocket up so we want to go ahead and secure this on all sides with some tape and what we're going to do next is put in our divider lines but here's the deal if you just leave this like this when your presser foot comes around we're going to go choop 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 your presser foot's going to hit this and it's going to get banged up so the way we get around that is we're going to put a piece of tear away on top of this and that tear away is then going to prevent our presser foot from getting stuck on our pockets so you can just float it. You don't need to tape it down. So I'm gonna float that on top. And now we're gonna run step 17. And that's gonna do our little um, divider pockets.
Okay, now we're getting ready. We're gonna go ahead and trim all the extra away. But we're gonna have the same issue with having the presser foot hitting here. So I'm gonna leave a piece of stabilizer there, but I wanna remove it everywhere else. So just like we have done before, carefully pull the stabilizer against your stitches and remove it from the hoop. And don't be overwhelmingly worried about the bottom because that's gonna get stitched over again. But you don't wanna pull your divider marks out. You don't wanna pull those stitches out. So I'm gonna leave this piece over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. And you could actually do this piece later, but we need it out of the bottom seam. So just gently pull it against your stitches so that it doesn't um, tear them out. And this would probably be um, a good opportunity. You could use like the um, solvent, soluble, soluble, water soluble stabilizer for this purpose as well. And then you can just take it with a piece of, and you can clean this up later with some tweezers. So we just wanna get the bulk of it out for right now. So it's out of our final. We're gonna do a satin stitch all the way around the outer side to hold this pocket in place well. Again, you just hold it against the stitches. And this would probably be a good time you could actually use your seam ripper as well to help tear that out. Oh, I just wrapped that in my fabric. And I'm using a little bit probably stronger stabilizer than I should be for this purpose because um, this is what I use. It's more of a medium. I use it for snap tabs. So just carefully pull it out and then come back in and you can get that skinny pieces out later. But right here, I want you to leave a piece of uh, tear away right there to start that. So we're just gonna leave it right here while we do the tack down. It's gonna go all the way around, just like a traditional applique. Make sure this is still out of the way. want to change your thread you can I'm not going to so then I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this stabilizer so we can do our satin stitching so we're gonna go ahead and get our applique scissors and we're gonna trim the rest of this out all the way around I think I have this picture, but I'm gonna do another picture. All right. So I'm gonna start over here, and I'm gonna get as close to that stitching as I can without cutting into it. It's um, a kind of wide satin stitch. I think it's 3.5. So, but with fabric, as you may know if you're experienced, um, it frays. So if you don't get it cut really well, then what happens is this needle comes down in between the fibers of the fabric. Um, they It frays really badly and you get fuzzies in your applique. And we don't want fuzzies in our applique because it looks messy. And it's the fault of not getting it close enough to that bean stitch or in this case, a tack down. And I can see right here, I don't have it really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim. I'm not overly worried because this is gonna be in the bottom and People aren't really gonna see the bottom very much, but just try and get it as close to that as you can. And, oh, you guys are probably getting a good view of my gray hair. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the satin stitch. And I have this already interfaced, so I think we're good. I don't think I need to do, oh, there goes my thread again. It's because the spool is getting low, so the tension of it is off and it's pulling out when I'm done. Um, but I was saying I don't think I need to add any extra stabilizer 
behind the satin stitching because I have woven fuse on it. But if you feel like um, you're using something a little bit thinner, then by all means, put another layer of stabilizer behind on the bottom of the hoop to support the satin stitching. And I may end up finding that I regret it. If I don't, I gotta really hurry up and get this done because I have to get up early for work. For my day job. This is work, right? Actually, sometimes I don't think it is. Sometimes I think this is just my fun outlet, my creative outlet. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and sand stitch. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this closely because we are still working against those flaps. So this is the time when having a purple thing in here um, to come in here so that your presser foot doesn't stick up on those flaps. So we don't want to do the satin stitching against um, with this, against the stabilizer, having that stabilizer floating in there with the satin stitching. And now you see we have one, two, three, Lots for our credit, our game cards. There's commercial bags that you can buy already that have the hard cases and are more protective probably, but who doesn't want to make their own um, gaming console bag? Oh, we're barely going to have enough purple. <laughs> we're going to play it down here. We're getting close. Oh, Mama has not cleaned up her test area over here for a while, so quite a mess. And unlike most of my bags where I put a um, placement on both sides and the top for D-ring strap connectors, um, I don't really think it works in this bag for this style of bag, so they're only on the top. But if you want D-rings on this side, put them in at the last step um, when you put the exterior down. And I think one of the testers actually, instead of using D-ring strap connectors, she actually just put her strapping in at that point. Um, and you can do that too, just put a um, raw edges on and then like a slide adjuster on there and I'm going to show you because I, I didn't trim it enough this is what happens when you don't get it trimmed enough you see I have those little flakes of the material okay so now we're ready to go ahead and put our back down again on the back our lining so turn that around and go ahead and you see, I spent an hour trying to get my tension working yesterday. It's still not perfect. And flip your lining down. Because we're going to be running our stitches to put our pocket, our gusseted pocket, and we need this to be down when we do that. So go ahead and lay this down. All right. Flip it around. And if you need to fold that fabric up to get it out of the way, um, then do that. And just fold it loosely out of the way. Now we're gonna run the placement stitches. Oh, and this is stuff that I've got to do at the beginning. I apologize, it's in the PDF, I just forgot to do it. Okay, where's my ruler at? So what you want to do is, and it's in the PDF, again, and where's my little ruler at? All right, I'm going to have to eyeball it because what did I do with my ruler? Um, so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and go ahead and move this tape out of the way for us a while. On both sides, we're going to mark a half an inch mark from this line. And actually my lining is perfect. So see here, about a half an inch. Use a ruler to mark it so it's even though. 
So now we have a tick mark here and the tick mark there. That's gonna be the top of your pocket. So we're gonna take our gusseted pocket and we want the folded line. I top stitched mine so it's easy to see. If you have not folded it yet, fold it in half. We want the folded line to meet up here at that tick mark, but we want the side edge to be over here. So you kind of have to lift it up and look at it. So what I do is I just kind of fold it like this, match that up, match the, this line up like that, and then hold it in place and let it go. And I had to bring it a little closer to me to do that so I can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this line over here, but it's gonna be actually a half an inch and you could actually even draw that half inch up here if you wanted. So we want that to be right on the top and we want the bottom alignment to be right on that half inch mark and then tape it down. What's very important is that you want it to be even on both sides of the bag. So I'm gonna tape this down really good and this is basically your seam allowance, half inch seam allowance is allocated for this bag. And so you can actually pull it over here at this point so that you make sure it's lined up over there as well. I'm gonna take another picture of this. Okay, so there's that half inch mark and there's the tick mark. And then like that, okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the hoop back on and we're gonna stitch the left side tack down. Oops. And then it's gonna go ahead and stitch our first, our, our fold line for our um, gusset. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and reach over here. So this is where we're at now. So this is our fold line. We're gonna come over to this side and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line it up on that side with our half inch mark and with our tick mark up here at the top. So there's our tick mark at the top and then fold this underneath back so you can find that lining right there and then line it up. So let me take a picture like this so I can show how I do this. So fold that back and then line that up. And that's what helps you get that lined up and then you can just slip that off. So I'll show you that again real quick. So go ahead and mat match your, your line up here top of that and it should be even all the way across then fold this out of your way line up the side here and then go ahead and tape this at the top and if you need to get a ruler to make sure I have I'm sorry I can't see because this material is a little shiny then you can make sure it's even all the way across okay so now I have it even here there and then I can go ahead and let this piece out and then finish taping it down and what you want to see is that if you fold this gusset down flat, it should be even all the way across the top, like this. If we fold this flat, it should be even all the way across. All right, so like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and stitch it this way. I'm just gonna stitch our fold for this side. Did I just move that? I hope not. And then it's gonna flip over and stitch up the right side.
All right, now we want to get our flap out of the way. So go ahead and remove all this tape. And this is the hardest part to explain in a PDF. What we're going to do is even out that middle um, extra material. Why is that getting stuck? I don't know why that's sticking. I'm going to remove this tape now so I don't forget it later because I did that on the other one and it ended up being in the seam. I was so bad. Okay, so trim stuff as you go along. All right. So now we have this big bulk right here, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna kind of fold it back over this way and fold it back over that way against those two folds until the middle is flat and we want it to be even on both sides. And generally, it'll end up being very close to the same as your tab. But right now it's not even, see that? It's not even. So you just need to play with it until you get it even on both sides. So if you just kind of like eyeball it from this direction and then you can look at it and then you can see it. And it's actually not even with those pockets because I kind of um, made the gusset a little bit bigger. So even it up with this pocket on that side and then even up this side I'm sorry, I keep seeing the pocket, the flap on this side. Okay, so now you see. So I just fold this in on this side until it's even on with this pocket, and I fold in on this. And then when our pocket comes down like this, we're gonna have, it's gonna be nicely covered. So let me try and see if I can get a picture of this. So fold this in until it's even with the flap. Fold this in until it's even with the flap. All right, and then I'm gonna get some pieces of tape because this piece you need to tack down really well so it's out of the way for the next few steps. Okay, so make sure that your top is even um, all across and then just put the tape down here and put the tape up here. We're not stitching through this up here. And then over here and do the same thing. And then hold it up and actually look at it and make sure that it's even. We're just putting this up here to hold it in place. tape it down really well and it's going to resist you because there's a lot of um, stabilizer in there and we did a lot of stitching on it so I don't want this to come loose down here so make sure you tape this this piece you cannot use enough tape just trust me on that use plenty of tape the final seam is actually going to be within this area here um, so if you have pins, you can actually pin this area down outside of the seam or the stitch area. But tape it down really good. All right, there we go. That's nice. So it's all out of our way. I have a picture. Hopefully these additional pictures on the file will help. The testers had issues with this section. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the placement line for our D-ring and we're gonna do one at a time, but we're gonna back tack over that zipper first. It just gives a little reinforcement and then we're gonna run our placement for our D-ring. We're just gonna do one at a time. I'm using three quarters inch, and this time, I know I may regret this, 
with this material, all I did was um, used a piece of Decoville light and cut it to three quarters inch. So hopefully it won't fray on me. Um, where did I just lose my purple thing? Okay, so there's that. And then of course we're gonna tape this down. I like to use a piece of tape that's longer than, um, wider than the D-ring so that the presser foot doesn't get stuck on it. So um, I find for my presser foot as the width of it that if I put the D-ring to the top of this top stitching, it's, it has enough clearance for the presser foot um, and not to get hit with it. So now one more thing, normally we don't need to worry about this D-ring, but it's gonna wanna flip up like this, right? And we don't want that to happen. So go ahead and tape that down now and get it out of your way. Because when we go to flip, to sew the back down, we don't want that D-ring coming up. I don't know if I can get it down a little bit more. Like that, yeah, I can, that's perfect. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and stack that down, tack that down. And this is just a, a, a light tacking. The full um, stitching will happen when we add the backing. Now my machine likes to move all the way around, so I'm gonna kind of do that thing with the back, make sure it doesn't hit the D-ring. Okay, this time it was okay. Okay, and again, something got stuck here. I think maybe some tape came loose. Huh, no, it seemed, felt like something was stuck. Okay, so again, we're gonna go ahead and put our D-ring strap connector there. And then tape it down. I go through a lot of this transport tape. And I'm gonna do the same thing and try and get that D-ring to snug up underneath here like the other one did. So it's out of the way, it doesn't come loose. Get in there. And we'll have to move it when we open up the zipper, but we're not opening that up right now. Again, if you haven't already, this is the time to switch over to a size 90 needle or even a hundred. Okay, now we can remove our tape. I'm quick getting stuck on there. So now we're gonna get our um, back panel that we did in hoop one. First, let's put our lining on the back. Because you don't wanna get the back panel on here and then flip it over and I have to redo it all again. So get this tape out of here though. Okay, so flip it over. Why didn't that cut? Hmm. And now we're gonna lay our lining panel right side down on the top zipper placement line. And then we're gonna tape it down. We are almost done. A few more steps. We are on step 28. Remember we had 33 color stops, but like 3,000 of those was doing our card slots. I'm not gonna tape this down at the bottom, um, but you can if you need to, because we're not stitching the bottom yet. So I'm just gonna hold that as I turn it over, get this in position, and now we wanna take our this piece and make sure this is taped and see our tick mark there and this registration is going to match this registration and tick mark. So you're just going to go ahead and lay this on here and you're going to match those up. So we're going to go ahead and find our tick mark there and find our tick mark there. And then this registration line that we stitched here is going to go on this registration line that we just stitched and then we're going to tape it. So let me See if I can pull this up and show you better. 
without not knocking this down. So this tick mark is going to line up with this tick mark. And then this stitch line is going to run up to that stitch line. Now, if you're using a number three zipper, that's going to end up being the top of your zipper. It should fall right along the line of the top of the zipper. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can see it. And you're also going to want to prepare one more piece of tearaway. The reason for that is because there's a lot of bulk right here. And if we don't control this, the presser foot could hit here or there or anywhere and just totally mess up. So if we put a piece of tear away, then it'll help that. So I got the middle lined up. So now I'm coming over here and I'm gonna adjust this a little bit until that is lined right on top of it. And I'm gonna tape it down. Now, because there's so much bulk here, I am actually going to take this at the bottom as well, even though we are going to lift that up it after this is done to move our zipper pull. Okay. So if we did both sides, the middle and the side right, this side should have lined up perfectly, and it did. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this tautly down here and put another piece of tape just to hold it in place while we do the top stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch once, we're going to turn over to the back of the hoop, and we're going to stitch, oh, this is how I keep pulling my thread out. We're going to turn to the back of the hoop and we're going to um, undo the, fold the lining down so that we can top stitch through that. That helps us to keep the um, lining out of our zipper. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll leave the top as it is um, and top stitch through it. So there's a lot of bulk right here. So um, keep an eye on your needle and consider moving up if you need to. Make sure your D-ring doesn't come loose. You know, on a regular sewing project, you normally would use um, a fold over and you would do like um, a three inch piece of material, fold it in half, then fold each side into the middle and then um, fold it in half again. And so you'd have three quarters by three inches. That's way too thick for most single needle machines. Six needle machines usually can get through that, but most single needles can't. So now we're gonna go ahead and Finger press this open, tape it back down, and we're gonna run one more lap around the top stitching there. And it's gonna stitch this down, and it just makes it lay a little bit nicer. And let's see if I can get this on here the right way. Good idea. Make sure your D-ring didn't come loose. And then you're gonna leave your lining up and we're gonna open up our zipper. And this is when we wanna get our piece of scrap stabilizer out. Because we're gonna come stitching down here and see all this bulk, it's, it's a lot of bulk and we just wanna have something to protect it over here. So go ahead and get a piece of tear away ready. And you don't have to tape this down, but it helps because it had a bunch up on me when I didn't tape it down. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up our zipper. So I'm gonna open up this down here and then just move your zipper pull so it's about three quarters of the way across the bag. So we're gonna have to lift up our little D-ring strap connector, but that's okay, because we're done zipping, we're done stitching at the top now. So it's fine if the D-rings moves. And I might have to, oh, I got a little piece of tape stuck in there. See? <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. I'm always reminded you to remove the tape as you need, as you're done with it. And I didn't, and I got stuck there. Okay, and then 
might have that one little stitch in there that from that tack down. Is that stopping me? It must have got in there. I didn't think it did, so I'll have to adjust that one more time because for the yeah it did. For the um number five zipper. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. I'm gonna move this tape off of here. You want this as flat as you can get it. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this down and get it as taut as I can. And if this lining here is in your way, you can always fold this out of the way. It doesn't matter. And you might have to actually adhere this to your hoop because that didn't even stick. So I'm gonna try and do this. Just try and get it nice and taut. I'm really concerned if I'm going to be able to get over this bulk over here, but we're going to try. I might have to switch over to a hundred needle. It was fine on the other one. I used fine on the other one. So, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and re-thread our needle. <laughs> get really you silly girl. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's see how I'm that using that is gonna help us get through all that bulk and it just wants to glide over then. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's not easy. Oops, I forgot. I just told you to tape this down. And I forgot to tape it down. So I'm going to just put a piece here. Up here. There you go. All right. And this is when you have that purple thing oh, that you can kind of go like this with. That's how hold it down. And that's a back tack. So now it's going to do the main stitching. That was back tacking the um, zipper. So when it gets down here, it's going to come to the end, and then it's going to move over to the center, and you might want to even lift up your presser foot at this point. Why did that? Wow, that started stitching before I put my presser foot back down. And it's going to stitch out. And I do this to help get through the bulk of the gusseted pocket. It just seems to work a little bit better than trying to go that way. And it's going to go back in the center and go over to the other side of the gusseted pocket. And I made this a different color stop. So if you need to stop and check that you, you're um, through all this work, that your pocket didn't come undone or anything, you can do that. So I'm confident that mine did not come undone, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start it back up again. And now it's gonna stitch here, and then it's gonna go up to the top. So we have this one more area, Tori, and then we have to come all the way around here to do the lining on the back. Again, we're going to go ahead and guide this. Get there. Help. Oh, I really think that might need to. I don't know why it seems thicker over on this side for some reason. I didn't think it was going to make it, but maybe it did. Oh. Okay. We're going to remove our stabilizer. So, wow. Now you can see on the back, everything looks good. So here we go again on the back. We want to remove our um, stabilizer behind the zipper and then we're going to run our last step. Get my seam ripper. So if you watched the first video already, you saw me do this. So I like to use the seam ripper because I can see the metal underneath the poly mesh. And then I just do this and glide it down. And if you want, you can flip it over and do the ball. Um, if you can get the ball in there. 
but I find I, I don't have any trouble cutting it this way. And just because I can see this the blade. So just go slow. My other seam ripper is better than this one though. And then I go to the end and just kind of poke it out at the end. And then I just flip around. Now on this side, we want to go ahead and get it started. And then you have to hold on to the side you already cut away to keep that tension. So on this side where it's a little bit harder to see, on the last video I just did the hoop one, I did go ahead and move it over to the ball side and because it's a little bit harder to see it over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always come in here with your small scissors and fix it. Now I don't actually take the seam ripper all the way to the end. I get my little snips out and I snip that carefully because when I was using the seam ripper to do it a couple of times, I ended up cutting my zipper. So I don't like to take that chance. So I just get out the little seam, little snips here and trim that little bit. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and put this lining down, tape it tautly. And I do tape this in the middle on the back. And, um, oh, that seam allowance is gonna be really short. So I need to, I don't know what I did. I need to recalculate that. Thought it gave it enough. Um, and tape it down at all the corners because these are the areas that like to come loose when you're doing your final stitch. Almost out of tape. The corners like this will bump up on you. And down here. Ooh. Oh, I think I grabbed the wrong piece of liner, you guys, when I did this. Uh oh. Oh, fooey. Remember I had to cut a new piece of liner? Did the wrong piece. All right, well, we're just gonna wing it and I will have to fix that later. Some of it's long enough. Why is it like over here it's not? I did, I grabbed the wrong piece when I recut it. Silly me, I'm just shy. It actually might be okay. I might get like an eighth of an inch in there because this last stitch does come inside a little bit. It's gonna be tight, tight, tight. Okay, so carefully replace this. And I'm not gonna redo this. I'm just gonna wing it and I'll fix it later. Um, so you guys can see when it's all done. All right, make sure everything's even. Now you see how that needle's going through there much better. Because this area was very thick, and then down here in the feet is very thick. And this is doing this on purpose. And what I found was, because it's so thick, it wasn't fully stitching the corners and the lining. So I have it kind of crisscross. And this stitch is just slightly outside the first stitch. Um, something I've been trying with um, Lino stitches are showing your seam and a little trick that I learned in the sewing world is to um, do another row of stitching just to the outside and that helps to take the pressure off the seam. So I'm trying that on my bags now and we'll see if it helps. Okay, this is our last part to get through. If we get through here, we're good. All right, there we go. So the last step is just to prevent us from going in the center again. So turn it over and make sure, and look, I almost caught it. So you know what, I'm actually gonna cheat and I'm just gonna glue that little corner closed because it's, it's, it was pretty close. Um, so make sure everything is good on the back before you unhoop it and then on the front. So go ahead and remove the tear away. And you shouldn't have to be as gingerly this time because that stitching was pretty, um, deep stitching. I mean, don't totally tear it, just carefully. And then we're gonna remove all the tape while it's hooped. 
just much easier to do that. And this is a big piece of tearaway that I can use for the next bag. So. All right, so I'm gonna move the tape everywhere I can find it. Some of this will get cut off when we do it, but the minute you forget a piece of tape, I guarantee you it'll end up in your seam and you'll be crying. How do I get this tape out of my seam? the same thing on the back. Oh, I cannot believe I did that with the lining. Silly me. So close. There's just a tiny little piece there. And sometimes you do have to be very careful with the tape on the bottom of the hoop that if you're, especially if you're reusing it, it sometimes it can like bulk up on you and that could actually be what causes your hoop to stick underneath. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my big boys out here. I love these zippers, scissors. So normally I would leave a little bit of a flap here, but since I kind of messed that up, um, I'm gonna show you anyway. So you'll come in at an angle and leave um, a little bit of a 45 degree angle, and you'll leave this piece a little bit longer so it's easier to close the hole when you're done. And then I, I do that, and then I like to flip over to the front side where I can see the thread, the stitches easier. So, and then I'm gonna cut this at, trim this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I back tacked the zipper on both sides. So normally I would not trim the zipper even to the stitching, to the seam allowance. But in this case, I back tacked on both sides. So I'm not worried about trimming. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it out. And then on the top, I want to make sure I don't cut through my D-ring strap connectors. I want to leave those a little bit longer. So I'm going to fold this down so I can see them. And then I'm going to trim across so I don't hit my D-ring strap connectors. The reason for that is when you put products in your bag, the weight of them takes up um, a lot. It puts a lot of pressure on the D-rings. and if you cut them even to the top of the bag, they're more likely to, that seam is gonna come out on you. But if you leave extra, then it can, it's like a cantilever effect. It will have that pressure that's here, so it's not gonna pull as much. If it pulls, it's just pulling on that piece. Let's hope that makes sense. I'm gonna see if my son is, hey Grayson, are you still up? Can I have your you know what? I don't want to say what it is because I'm on the YouTube video and I don't want to get censored for saying the, the copyrighted name. So I'm going to have him bring me his game device. I'm not a sponsor by that company. And I don't have their permission to use their name or any of that good stuff. So I'm not taking chances. We won't mention any names. Give me one minute. Okay. All right. So now, normally you would have a longer flap over here. We don't need all the rest of this to be long, only the lining. So go ahead and fold that down and trim over Here's the rest my, of this. You know what? The gaming device. Yeah. Thank you for that gaming device, my child. Wow, what a mess we have here. Okay. Move this out of the way. Now on the corners, what I like to do is I like to come in, just trim them off, but then I like to trim out like here at a taper. And that helps you get in a little bit nicer um, corner. So again, I'm not gonna do it over here since I messed up that lining right there. I'm just gonna taper it this way. And that gives you a little bit nicer. And you can do the same thing on the material only, the vinyl or material. Don't do it on the zipper at the top. Don't cut into your zipper but just trim that out and it'll help you have a little bit nicer these don't need to be quite as long just a half an inch all right and we're ready to turn it now I have a lot of interfacing on this so it might be a little bit difficult but I, I give you a pretty generous hole 
I have found that normally I go from corner to the center hole, but I found with this, with the card slots in there, it's easier to come and work this way. Um, and just be gingerly about it, but don't be too worried if it's, um, if you do tear it, it's not the end of the world because you can um, always sew it or glue it. But you can see how much thickness we have with those, the gusset there. So just start working it. And I may give up and not turn this on the, if it's too hard. Because <laughs> it's so hard to do it on the camera and get it in the right angle. It hurts my shoulders to reach over and do it. Let me try and see if I can get it going. Usually if you can get the one side through, then the other side just kind of comes through long for the ride. But it is thick because I'm using, so when, by the time you add the deco bill and I have woven fuse on some pieces, it, it makes it almost the same depth, is that the word I want? Stiffness of using vinyl. So even though I didn't use a real, real vinyl, I used like a, uh, and this came loose because I might mess up. That's why that came loose. So don't worry about that. Yours is not gonna do that. I'm gonna add two inches extra to the lining just to be safe. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Hit wrong lining. All right, All there we go. So I like to try and get um, all the corners worked out while it's to the right side like this. It just makes it a little bit easier when you come out on the other side. So then reach in here and go ahead and push, try and get this open over here. See all that? You wanna be able to open up your zipper. So go ahead and pull this out. And it's kind of hard because the gusset in there. And then reach in and finish opening your zipper up the rest of the way. And then you can go ahead and turn the bag right side out and then get your favorite pointing device. My D-ring strap connector is taped down in there. So remember that. So I can't get the zipper over because the D-ring's stopping me. So reach in there and get that tape off the D-ring and move it out of the way. All right, now I can get the zipper open all the way. And then go ahead and flip it the rest of the way out. Oh, Grayson, can I have some of the, you know, the little game things that you put inside of it? I think they're in the other bag. The game cards. You can just bring that other bag if you want. I think they're in there, aren't they? I was playing with them earlier. All right, so I'm working it out. What are my other two? In my, the other bag I made like this. It's on the bed. No, I don't need that. Just I want those cards. Here's one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start working out the sides and the bottom. And this is when you get your little pointing tool or whatever it is. This thing actually can do a good job too. And just work it out. And it's hard to do this on the camera. I'm so sorry, guys. Use my thumb in there. I wanted the gaming console because this is the 10 inch one. It will not fit that big gaming console, but my, if we take the controllers off the side, then we can put the gaming console in the main pocket and then the controllers in the gusset pocket. So what I want to stress is when you put your receiving magnets on or snaps on the gusset pocket, you wanna do that with, after you have um, something inside the gusset pocket to take up space. Okay, so I'm having trouble here, but I'm, it, you just have to take the patience to work it out. And um, I'm, I don't have the patience because I want to show you the last bit and I'm tired. 
but see, I'm working it out. And the, the rounded over hemostats that I have misplaced work the best in my opinion. Or you can get like a rounded bamboo skewer, chopsticks. All right, that side's coming out. And then rub it along the sides. It's funny this, um, let me try it. The ladies are watching the Asian countries. They like just pull a thing in and pull it out like this. And it's like, how do they do that without tearing their material? They come in here like this and then they can pull it out. It's obviously not working for me. I have these tweezers that have a harder handle. So yeah, that's helping better. So just work the corners out. If there's not a race. This isn't, you know, you don't have to have it done in two seconds. Take the time to make it nice. And remember, I couldn't trim that one corner very well since I messed the lining up. But I'm gonna just wing it. I'm gonna glue that lining closed. It's gonna be at the bottom. Nobody's gonna notice it. All right, there we go. Now, when you get up here to the corner where the zipper's at, I like to, um, get my thumb in here and I get my little device and I put my thumb on top of the zipper pole and then I just kind of pop it up like that. Just like that. And we have that other zipper at our seam there that's kind of yelling at us, but that's all you have to do. And I'm gonna trim this thread I missed. This side is a little bit trickier because we have all this bulk right there. So what I have found that works the best is to use your little dice see where the bulk is there, push this and push it down and just keep pushing, it'll push, push it down like that and back and push it in, you're basically pushing it into the seam allowance and pulling the zipper out at the same time. Now this is a little bit loosey-goosey because we haven't done the lining yet. And then go ahead and zip it and there you go, that's your bag. So now what we wanna do is take all this tape off of our gusset pocket and then we're going to put our cam or I'm using cam snaps they're magnet snaps from cam snaps and we want to put the receiving end in so I have the male end the studs but we need to put the sockets into our um, gusset pocket Wow, this tape is sticking. I've never had this stick to fabric before. So you see here we, oh, I missed a piece. We have our little gusset pocket. Wow, this is crazy. And there's our little gusset pocket, so it comes open. You put your little cartridge in there, in your little pockets. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the controllers from this gaming device. And see the gaming device will go into the center. This is for the 10 inch. It'll come down in here, like that. All right, and then we're gonna put these in here, like this. And so now that's how much room we need for our pockets. So layer them in there. And then we're gonna get a pen so we have whatever object we're gonna be carrying in here in our pocket. So now it's taking up that space. See, if we had done this flat like this and put our snaps all the way down here, there's no room to put anything in our pocket. So whatever you think you're gonna carry in this pocket, put it in there okay, and put your little flaps down. And then I would give a, just a little bit of graciousness to it and then go ahead and mark with your pen where your snap, your other end is gonna go. So, and if you haven't put your snaps in at all yet, then that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my hole punch so I don't forget where that hole is at real quick. And then I'm gonna punch that hole. Okay, I can see it. So that side is done. So put this back in here, 
make sure that's lined up. And I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing and mark where I want my pull, my little hole. Right there. I'm gonna put the hole there. And now we can take our little controllers out. through it nicely this side did not do that oh yeah it did okay now important thing is to make sure that you put your um the right side of your snaps on because i messed that up once and oh it's not easy to get these snaps off it was not easy i almost had to abandon the whole project so take the time to make sure you're doing it right okay so i have the two stamp covers and then i need the two female pieces that are in here. This video isn't really meant to be teaching you how to do this, but I'm here. And I already have the magnet die on here. So there's um, two of these bottom ones. One has a recessed um, opening for the to receive the female and the other one has a prong to receive the male. I thought I had that setting out so it would be easy to get to it. Oh, you guys, you're going to not get to see the rest of this. Hmm. I'm going to that setting out so that I could show you how to do this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is this it? No, that's the regular one. Okay, well, I gotta find that. So I'll just show you. Um, and I just won't snap them. I won't be able to snap them tight. Oh, wait, is this it? It was sitting right there and I didn't know it. Losing in my mind, guys. Okay, so we want this piece to be here. So, and that piece there. So that has to come in through here. So this piece needs to be on the outside and then the round piece goes on the inside. So that's how you make sure you do it right and then the cap goes on the inside. Oops. Okay, show you that again. So this goes on the outside, and then the cap goes on the inside. And remember I had put that extra Decoville light in here to help support these snaps. And I think I actually do have the right die. I don't know how I managed that. <laughs> okay, so this is the tricky part. I'm gonna take the gaming console out of here again because we have to manipulate this bag and that's kind of weighty. I don't wanna to have to deal with that. So you want this piece to be down onto the die and it'll actually, the magnet will actually click in place when you have it because it's very strong for this one. All right, and then press this down and press it together. And then do the same thing. You want a nice press. You don't wanna see some of the loosey goosiness there. All right. All right. 
right, there we go. So we'll put our little gaming device in here and we put our little consoles in here and there's probably room to put other stuff. Put our little snaps on. And then we have the pocket in the back where we can put our phone. Put your crossbody strap on it and there you go ultimate gaming bag and ultimate gamers bag hope you guys like this one um today's thursday i probably will have it saturday i have to few do a few more bugs on the file and make sure the pdf is good and i'll be ready thanks everybody bye bye